Hello Internet, Adopted Mike here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at this B360 board from ASRock. This is the uh, B360M for Micro ATX, and it's their Pro 4 line. As uh, you can take a look here, we can tell this is an Intel chipset supporting AMD Crossfire. We'll take a look around the box here. Got some of the specifications on the back here and then on the side. So it's just a regular motherboard box, but uh, the important thing is what's inside. So let's take a look. And opening it up, we've got a manual as long as with a uh, driver disc. We've got a rear I.O. shield. There's some SATA cables and then the motherboard itself. I'll go ahead and get it out of the bag. All right, here's the board out of the bag. Uh, as you can see, we've got a gray and black aesthetic going on. We've got this, uh, this is basically just a piece of plastic here. It's not really functional other than to uh, cover up what you know could be kind of you know ugly for seeing the top of the I/O. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just not really functional, but it does uh, improve the aesthetics, especially if you can see the board in your case. We've got a VRM heat sink here, although not one on top. Not that that'll be a huge deal because you can't overclock the uh, B, uh, um, a CPU in the B360 chipset anyway, although we do have an 8-pin CPU power, so you will have uh, no problems utilizing, if you wanted to, even the higher TDP uh, CPUs because we'll have plenty of power support for those. And then we can see here we've got our CPU socket and our four DIMM slots as well as our 24 pin connector there. Then moving along down we've got a USB 3.0 connector there and then one, two, four, six SATA ports. These are uh, right angle doubles here and then we've got the two here. As far as um, we've got some fan headers we can point out real quick. There is a four pin there, a four pin there, and a four pin there in order to power some fans. And then we'll move into the um, M.2 storage. So we've got an Ultra M.2 storage up here. This is the one that you're going to want to use for NVMe because it's got four lanes. So if you're going to install an NVMe drive, populate that one with it to get the full benefit. Uh, this one down here is going to only run at one lane and uh, also too is going to disable one of the SATA ports. But uh, this would be, you know, for a secondary uh, one, but this will give you your full by four and your most performance. This one here is meant for a Wi-Fi adapter. As you can see, the screw being here, it's meant for the little tiny cards and will be ideal for a Wi-Fi adapter. Other PCI Express co connectivity, we've got a 16x slot here and then a by one and by one, both with the, it's notched out, so you could put a, bigger card there uh, or a longer uh, card there and just only utilize one lane if you wanted to and then this bottom is by 16 physically however electrically it is only by 4 so keep that in mind uh, that's why this will only support crossfire is because SLI needs a 8x and 16x not that you would probably want to do a dual graphics setup with this budget board anyway so uh, let's move on and we'll take a look at the uh, bottom connectors here and get to the rear I.O. So along the bottom here we've got uh, first our HD audio out for the front panel connector. There's SPDIF is there however the pins aren't soldered so can't use that unfortunately. Although we do have a COM port next if I can get this thing to focus a little better and then there would be the LED controller here but the pins again are not soldered and we come on down we've got a TPMS header there we've got a USB uh, 2.0 ports there's three in total uh, as the top one there is not uh, the pins aren't soldered onto it so there's a single one and then two here under above my thumb. We've got our front panel connectors along here as well as our clear CMOS and then we get back up in and you can see that M.2 a little closer. This obviously the one that you wouldn't want to use and then we've got our right angle SATA ports. So that will cover the bottom of the board and now let's take a look at the rear I.O. 
Before I hit the rear I.O., I want to make a quick correction. I did find four uh, fan headers. There's one there, one there, one there, and then one there. So I did say three in the beginning, I believe. Uh, I did find the fourth one. So there are four four-pin fan headers for fan control. So the rear I.O. is giving us PS2 ports. We've got a VGA, a DVI-D, uh, we've got a HDMI, and then our USB 3.1. These are the 10 gigabits, so there's a Type A and a Type C. Then we've got USB 3.0, two of those. USB 2.0, there's two of those. We've got Gigabit Ethernet, and then uh, our audio out. So that gives us a good look at the rear I.O. So to wrap it all up, we've got a decent budget-oriented uh, micro ATX board here. This would be uh, great for a budget gaming build or just an office machine. That's what uh, this um, one is actually going to go into, uh, be just an office machine with a Core i3. <laughs> However, you could pair it with uh, something a little more powerful and then put a decent GPU in it and you would have you know no problem with any kind of gaming performance for the price of this uh, again I'll mention it is a budget board so that may fit very well for some of you especially with the new quad core i3s I'm not sure if I mentioned it but this is uh, with being that it's a 300 series motherboard it's supporting the new coffee lake CPUs so you could theoretically put the six core i7 in here if you wanted to although I'd probably go for a higher board for the that one but other than that um, you know like I said solid board ASRock has been a great brand uh, for me I've um, built in a lot or built with a lot of ASRock boards and I've had nothing but luck with them except for one one time I had a VRM short out uh, very soon and um, other than that um, like I said I use a lot of them and they've been great motherboards for me and my clients as well too so that wraps up this video um, and as always thank you for watching